What's up, guys? It's Coach Grant with First Down Training, and today we're going to be breaking down three advanced wide receiver route running tips. So we're going to be talking about three specific things that wide receivers can add to their game to take their route running skills to the next level. We're going to be looking at routes here from Devontae Adams. We're going to look at that great whip route the other day from Hunter Renfro on the goal line, and then a couple other things that you guys can apply to your game. So I hope this helps you guys out. Let's get started with this video. So first route is from Devontae Adams. So the first thing I want to talk about is how wide receivers can pair their routes. Okay, so that is the first advanced tip for wide receivers is you need to pair your routes together to be unpredictable. Let me tell you something about these DBs. These DBs are smart. DBs are one of those guys like they're playing a guessing game 24-7. That's why DB is such a hard position to play. So they are going to study a ton of film. They're trying to get your tendencies down. They're trying to understand what you do as a wide receiver so they can guess correctly more often than they guess wrong, right? So as a wide receiver, what I need to do with that information is that I need to make my routes look similar. How many times have we seen Devontae Adams attack a DB's leverage like this and then run this fade, burst up to this fade, either Rodgers puts it back shoulder, he puts it over the back shoulder, over the shoulder, whatever it may be. But how many times have we seen him do that? And it's always quick. There's always a quick twitch to it. So now we do the exact same thing, but actually run a slant. So again, he's inside shape for a reason. So Adams doesn't want to just run to the outside, especially when we got off coverage like this. When we have a DB who's one to two yards off, a lot of receivers will just do the straight diamond release. And a diamond release is what Adams does, where you take three steps to the outside. So it's like one, two, three to the outside on a 45, try to get his hips to commit to the fade. But in Instead, when we have a yard or two of space, we want to close the distance. So if that DB does get hands, I could throw him by, right? So he closes the distance with him to get this, just to close the cushion, right? Does not want to run away from this DB because if he runs away from him and there's too much space, when he breaks back to the slant, that DB's got all the time in the world to recover. So we want to close the space, not only to make it look like a fade, not only to make it look like the route that we've ran a million times on film, but also to make it easier to slip back underneath this DB. So now when he bursts up off of this like attack leverage release. His eyes go straight to the quarterback. The eyes is what alerts this DB. And again, that DB should be looking at the torso. He shouldn't be focused on the eyes, but the eyes certainly help, especially when we're in a goal line situation, right? When we're in a goal line situation, you peeking back with those eyes quick, you actually having speed to that back corner, committing your shoulders and committing your hips. That is what will get that DB to turn. And you see how he puts the brakes on. When he comes off of this, it's one, two, three. But again, he's committed to it. He has speed. His eyes are looking back to the quarterback. His hips and his shoulders are committed on the 45. I can't tell you how many guys will do this and then when they do this peek back their shoulders and their hips never commit to the fade they never actually turn they never actually turn and run and if you don't turn and run that's not going to get the db to bite on this route so we have to make sure fellas when we make my routes look the same when we pair our routes together everything about it has to look the exact same if you were running a fade it would look the exact same frame by frame until he hits that third step and he's able to break this thing right off so first advanced wide receiver route running tip is to make sure that you pair your routes together and a great and a pair that should always be ran together is a slant and a fade route. Let's watch the thing again full speed, then we'll get into that Hunter Renfro whip route, and you guys can learn how to know the right situation to use longer developing releases on a route, okay? But before we get into that route, fellas, I want to talk to you guys about an opportunity we have this offseason. We are traveling to nine different cities and eight different states for two-day-long quarterback and wide receiver training camp. So this, I wouldn't even honestly call it a camp. It's more like a clinic because we have limited spots, fellas. We are only taking 10 to 12 kids per position per age group. And the camp's going to be split up into youth section of the camp and a high school section of the camp. Every single athlete will get a chance to work with myself and the staff that I will be bringing out. We will be heavily focusing on individual positional skill work, one-on-ones and seven-on-seven. -seven. We will have DBs out there your own age that you guys can go up against and you guys can work with. So this is not a normal summer camp that you guys are going to go to. We are with you for two days, four hours each day. So we're actually going to take the time to develop you. So again, if you guys are located in Tampa, Florida, Houston, Texas, Phoenix, Arizona, Newark, New Jersey, Atlanta, Georgia, Georgia, Chicago, Illinois, Dallas, Texas, Nashville, Tennessee, or Los Angeles, California, or near those areas and want to come out and get some working with us, we'd really appreciate it. Spots are filling up fast, fellas, especially because of the holidays. Got a lot of interest on these camps, so we'd love to have you out there. We'd love to work with you guys. Let's get back to this video. Check out that very first link below if you guys are interested in attending one of our camps. Let's get started back with this video, okay? So now, this rider from Hunter Renfro, again, longer developing route. Everybody loves to say, oh, okay, that route took way too long, right? That route took too long. He's wasting too much time with his feet. What is he doing? So the second advanced route running tip, wide receiver route running tip, is that you got to understand the situations when to use these longer developing moves, okay? So now, obviously, Renfro, what does he do right here? He comes off, he does a little slide release, slows the tempo, then he makes that one, two, bursts up to the inside, then he breaks it off on the whip, right? So that's like two to three moves right there. Now, everybody, all the Instagram experts will be like, oh, 
that takes too long. Oh, car was getting pressure. You know, he got lucky, whatever. You got to understand the right situation to do this. Let's talk, let's talk a little bit about protection here, right? So let's say, let's say Renfro's on the outside. Chances are it's the goal line, right? Chances are we're on, or because we're on the goal line, it's probably not a spread formation. We're probably not going empty. So chances are there's probably like two tight ends, right? It's a two tight end set. And they probably have a running back in the backfield as well, right? So what does that mean? That means you got five offensive linemen, you got a tight end, another tight end. So what does that mean? Five, six, seven, and then you have a running back, right? So that's eight guys blocking. So the only way that that quarterback's going to be getting pressure is if they bring nine guys. But let me tell you this, if they bring nine guys, that means they're going to be having to bring a safety. And guess what? We're going to have an easy slant right over the middle every single time. So chances are they're not going to do that. Chances are they're going to have a guy sitting right there as like a quarterback spy trying to wait for that over the middle pass. So we have protection. It's going to be nine guys to block eight, or it's going to be eight guys to block seven guys or six guys or however many guys they want to blitz. So Derek Carr has time back there, you guys. That's what we have to understand. When we have a good protection above play, when you know that the quarterback's going to have some time to throw simply because of the protection, that's when you guys can use these longer developing moves. Or simply if it's like a sprint out. Like let's say maybe Derek Carr is sprinting out to the right. We could do this tempo of a move or maybe he's doing a play action boot. That takes a little bit longer. So you have to understand when to do these moves because when you guys come off and let's say he had to run just like a regular whip route, he would do something way quicker than this. If it was like a first read, but again, we have some time. We could work him off the platform. I could slide him. Now I burst back to the inside. Then I pop this thing right off and you see it times up perfectly for Carr right here that's the timing of the play as a wide receiver the second advanced route running tip is you have to understand the timing of the play not only your route you can't just go up to the line of scrimmage and be like oh I have a whip route again it's going to be the same thing every time what if you have a whip route and it's off a of play action what if you have a whip route and it's off of a sprint out what if you have a whip and it's quick game right like let's say the quarterback's just taking three steps and you're the first read and you got to get it out those are all different timings you have to understand as a wide receiver because we cannot get to here too quick imagine Imagine if Renfro got to this spot too quick, that DB would have all the time in the world to close space because we'd be running out of bounds and then Derek Carr can't throw us the ball. It's all about timing when you play wide receiver. It's all about timing when you take that next step as a wide receiver and understand the football IQ that goes into running routes. I know I didn't show that clip too much. I know it's not a breakdown of technique, but you guys have to understand that. You will not be a good route runner if you don't understand that. You will be caught doing all this fancy crap and the quarterback is not going to be, his quarterback's going to be waiting for you to get open. He's going to get sacked or worse, you're going to get to the window too quick quick because you run it the same way every time and the quarterback's not going to be ready for you yet and then you're going to get covered you're going to get covered simply because you're sitting there waiting okay you have to understand when to use the correct moves let's watch the thing again full speed great job by Renfro being patient getting that DB to bite on the slant and then popping this thing right off to get that separation and score that TD okay so now Third advanced wide receiver route running tip that you guys can do is close the space at the top of the route, okay? So this we're looking at this route from Jalen Waddle. So he's running a post route with an inside release, okay? So what does that mean, right? So if you got press and you take an inside release, obviously it's ideal to take run take an inside release on a post route. That's what we all would like to do. Um, so that that's that's obviously ideal, but how do you guys actually work on that? So when we have a DB who's like head up, that's when we could take the inside release. If a DB's inside shade, you don't want to force it because he could just get right into you and reroute you. You'd want to just take the outside release, try to restack and make a move, or try to throw him by and slip underneath, right? Now, if you take the inside release, it's two things. You could either work to restack or could use you could use what I call a chicken wing technique, okay? So when he comes out, he does this split release, right? Split release gets the DB to freeze. He dips that shoulder underneath to be able to restack and get over the top. So when you have to run a post and you get the inside release, two ways you can do it. You could either restack and get that DB trailing your back hip, or you could lean into him at the top of the route, aka what I call the chicken wing technique, okay? So that's exactly what Waddle does right here. He does that. He gets to the top of the route. Now, instead of just breaking this off, like he's got space right here, instead of just running it to the middle, he gets back vertical. He closes that space with the DB so he can lean into him, give a little push. And again, that, that's part of the receiver position. That's not a flag. If you give him that little lean, you give him that little push, you're fighting those hands. You can get a ton of space. And if you accelerate off of that break, you accelerate out of this thing fast, you will win that race to the ball and you could get that ball over the middle with a lot of separation. So make sure third advanced wide receiver route running tip is close the space at the top of the route when you have an inside breaking route with an inside release or like an outside breaking route with an outside release right? Let's talk about that. So like, let's say he had to run a 10 yard out. 
And let's say the DB's maybe inside shade and we get the outside release. I don't want to just round up into the route. I don't want to just get him off that platform with my, I don't want to just do this. I don't want to just move him off the platform and then just go round into it because he'll be able to recover. I want to get him off the platform, restack and either get over the top of him or I want to just get into his ins or get into his like outside his right shoulder or if he, he's probably going to turn and run with me, excuse me, it would be his left shoulder and left hip. So that's what we got to make sure that we're doing that. When we take the release to the side of the route, so if an inside breaking route than inside release or an outside bringing route than outside release. You have to close that space at the top, reassess vertical and close the cushion. Let's watch the thing again, full speed. Great job by Waddle being sudden with the split, leaning into him at the top of that route to be able to break this thing off. Also keeping spacing on the route is important by using that method, okay? All right, guys, we want to thank you for watching. I really appreciate it. If you guys have any questions at all, please don't hesitate to leave those in the comment section below. We'll get back to you as soon as I can. I always appreciate the feedback and it's always great to hear from you guys. And again, fellas, if you guys are local to one of those areas that we talked about, want to come out and get some great work in with us. We'd love to have you out. Check out that very first link in the description below for a two-day quarterback, wide receiver, and DB training camp. Very first link below, like I said, to get the sign-up information. I'll see you guys next time.